How and why did you decide to write an anti-Islamic book? How was your life in regards to faith? What did you believe in? What was your heaviest and most regretful expression that you used for Islam? What was the reaction people around you when you became Muslim? I thought to myself, Islam is a lie. Islam is a danger. I got over 2,000 death threats. And in the end, I decided to write an anti-Islam book. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Joram van Klaveren. Thank you for accepting our invitation and we are happy to have you with us. I want to first ask you, who is Joram? Wa alaikum salam, uh, Ahmed. <laughs> Thank you very much for the invitation. It's a great honor for me to be here. Joram van Klaveren was born on January 23 in 1979 in Amsterdam in a pretty regular family, father, mother, uh, brother, not a brother, younger, uh, sister, a cat. In Amsterdam, I was born and raised there uh, in a... Uh, we're practicing Protestant family. After I finished high school, I studied comparative religion. I, I was a teacher for a few years. There happened a lot of things in the Netherlands, especially in my life. Also, when I look at the bigger picture when it came to Islam, I became politically active for the Freedom Party. I became a member of parliament. And in the end, I decided to write an anti-Islam book, which started as an anti-Islam book how was your life in regards to faith? What did you believe in? Before I was a Muslim, I was a Protestant Christian from the Reformed Church. We read from the Bible, we all got biblical names, we were all baptized, uh, we went to church, etc., etc. So we're pretty Christian in that way, in that sense. Of course, I believe that there is a creator, I believed in heaven, hell, I believed in angels, revelations, and of course, what separates the Christians from the Muslims is that I believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. Yeah, in, in a more uh, philosophical way, I I believed he was God himself, of course. I believed in the resurrection and crucifixion of Christ, of course. And I believed in the atonement. So, But because the Trinity is a very complex concept, whether you believe it or not, it's still very complex. Because if there is a God in the Bible, it says God is eternal. But if you are eternal and at the same, in the same, you die, you cannot be eternal and mortal at the same time. So that was something when I... was a little older, 16, 17, I started questioning things like that. It's not very logical. I talked to many, many priests, preachers, even rabbis, and the answers I got weren't very satisfying. That made it, for me, kind of complex. And, and in the end, I had some doubts about uh, stuff like this. But I said, well, I set it aside and I thought, okay, I just, I just believe it and perhaps I'm not smart enough to get the whole picture. And I still believed in uh, God. I still believed that Jesus was a very important person. I believed he was the son of God, but how it exactly was, I, I left it for what it was. How and why did you decide to write an anti-Islamic book? After high school, I went to a university and I did comparative religion. And the remarkable thing, I think, was that the first day of me going to college was uh, September 11, 2001. Already thought, okay, these Muslim guys are kind of crazy and this religion isn't the truth. Then a few years later was this guy in the Netherlands called Theo van Gogh, Theo van Gogh. He was a famous filmmaker and he was killed in the street. He was shot and they tried to slit his throat and they put a knife in his stomach with a letter on it for another girl. And it was it said, you are next. So it strengthened my anti-Islam feelings in such a way that I thought, well, I have to become politically active to do something and stop this evil of harming our country. You started politics because of Islam. Yeah, and that really had to do with Islam. That was the reason that I wanted to write a book to explain to people why Islam was a danger for the world. When I was writing my book, like I said earlier, the questions, the doubts I had about Christianity popped up again. And that was about truth, of course, because I was a believing Christian guy. And yeah, the Christian questions I had in the end were answered in an Islamic way. Because of course, when I started writing the book, a lot of people think that it was a political book, but it wasn't so much a political book. It was a religious 
religious book because I wanted to show people why Islam was a danger as a religion. And I wrote it from a Christian perspective. So in the beginning, I made a comparison between the Christian concept of God and the Islamic concept. So I start comparing it. But because I had these doubts about the Trinity and I saw Tawheed, yeah, the oneness of God in Islam, I thought, yeah, it sounds a little bit more logical. And then I thought to myself, well, I reread the Bible to see, to refresh myself, to see, okay, why isn't the concept of Islam, the Tawheed concept, isn't the Christian concept. But when I was reading the Old Testament and I saw what the Old Testament prophets said, it was one God, one God, one God. And then I thought, okay, I'll look only at the words of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. And then there's this story in the New Testament that where a guy comes to Jesus and he asks him, what is the most important thing? In life how can i gain paradise and he says there are two things he says here O israel here your god is one treat your neighbor as you want to be treated yourself so i thought well even jesus christ says here O israel your god is one so I I thought, well, this whole Muslim concept of God sounds more logical. And it's the same concept that I find in the Old and the New Testament. And I know Christianity as a religion teaches something else, but it isn't the concept of God that I find in the Bible. So after weeks and weeks of study, reading, rereading all kinds of books, I thought to myself, okay, perhaps this oneness of God is something that is true. But in the end, after I read all these books and articles and made com a comparison between prophets from the Old Testament with Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, I had no arguments anymore to say they are prophets and he is not. And I thought to myself, well, if I accept Moses on these grounds and I cannot accept the prophet, then there is something else. So I thought, why don't I think he is a prophet? And I thought, oh, perhaps because he had many wives. But then again, when you look at Solomon or you look at King David, Abraham, there are a lot of people in the Old Testament that had more wives. And when you look at even outside of the religious books culturally in Europe, in, in Africa, Asia, everywhere, there were men with several wives uh, for several reasons. So I thought to myself, well, that cannot be a reason either. So one by one, all these reasons fell. And in the end, I thought, well, I have to say all of them are not prophets. But I, I didn't believe that because I thought, well, the things they did, they said, the miracles that happened, etc. They were confirmed in what they said and what they did. So they are. And then I said, well, then I have to accept that Prophet Muhammad perhaps is a prophet too. So I was doubting it. So first I thought, well, it's the most evil person I know because of the history. Then I said, well, perhaps it's not that evil but he's not a prophet. And in the end, I start doubting perhaps he is a prophet. Yeah, that took, of course, me reading a lot of books again. And the one thing that I think was very wise of Abdul Hakim Murad to say was, he said, well, the books you read about with the anti-Islam arguments are written by non-Muslims. He said, if you want to know more about Christianity, you don't read books from atheists. You start reading the books from the Christians. Why do they believe this? What are the arguments? So he said, you have to do the same with Islam. So start reading Islamic books from Islamic teachers, from Islamic scholars, etc. And then you can see if you compare the books on the same topic of people who are Muslim and wrote those books and non-Muslim, you can see where they took the wrong turn, where they translated words in the wrong way, sometimes perhaps even not on purpose, but just because they didn't know where things are added, where things left out of it. So, and in the end, you see there is this other religion almost created because of all these things. And that's what I did. And that's what I also did with the life of the prophet, because I read a book from Martin Lynx, the life of the prophet based on the earliest source of Muhammad. And it was written, of course, by a convert. And his way of reasoning, uh, his way of telling, his way of writing appealed to me because it's culturally the same thing. How do I approach a certain topic, etc. And it was the first time that I saw him not so much as a warlord, because that's the picture I had in my mind, but I saw him as a father and I saw him as a friend and a teacher and so much 
much more and thought, yeah, I saw the person and his character and I said, well, I can't say a lot, but I cannot say that this is not a good man. So his character persuaded me to read more and to want to know more. What surprised you the most while doing your research? The story about Hint, there was something that, like a switch, like I had to change. And myself that she was forgiven. If you can forgive someone who kills a relative, especially a favorite uncle of you, even starts parading with parts of his body to show other people that she humiliates you and whatever you stand for, that means you have such a great character. It's very special. It's, it's, it's something you don't see. And that's what he did. So I thought to myself, well, it was a really special guy. And when I thought that, I thought, yeah, well, I have these arguments for him being a prophet. I see his character. I see the way he treated other people. I see how he treated his enemies. I think he is a prophet. But then I thought to myself, whoa, that's horrible. Because I already accepted this oneness of God. And now I say he is a prophet. If I say there is only one God and Muhammad is his prophet, that's almost Shahada. <laughs> so I thought to myself, okay, let's close the books. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> this is going in the wrong direction. And of course, I wasn't that anti-Islam anymore because of what I read and what I saw and what I experienced. What I tell you now, it sounds a little like a fairy tale, but it really happened. In the end, there were all these books at the table. And when I had this feeling of, yeah, okay, this is Shahada in a way. I said, well, I put all the books away and I put uh, the books on the highest shelf, but there were so many books that a lot of books fell off the shelf. And one of the books that fell off the shelf was the Quran. And when I picked it up, my hand was on a page with Surah 22, Ayat 46. And it says, it's not the eyes that are blind, but the hearts. And I thought to myself, that really is my problem because it wasn't the eyes. I, I really could see what I written down myself. Nobody forced me to write this book. Nobody said you have to write this or that. I started writing myself and I could see it with my own eyes, but I still couldn't accept the fact that I said he is a prophet. There is this one God. I just couldn't. So it wasn't my eyes that were blind, but it was really my heart. I couldn't accept it. I think my nafs or my nafs or whatever, my ego, I, I couldn't accept it. And I said, well, God, I don't care if it's the God from the Bible or the Quran, give me a sign or something so that I 100% sure know this is the way. And I went to bed, but when I woke up, I felt very secure in myself. I really felt very secure. I, I've never been more secure about anything else. The whole anxiety or the whole doubting issue disappeared like, like snow for the sun. And I thought to myself, well, I think I'm a Muslim. Well, and then of course I had to tell other people. What was the reaction of the people around you when you became Muslim? What was the reaction of the people around you when you became Muslim? Most of them were very negative, yeah, of course. For a lot of people, especially some uncles and aunts, it was kind of a shock. They heard it when it was on the news. I told my mother and my mother started crying. And my wife was pretty open. Yeah, she was very cool about it. She said, well, if Islam is what you really believe and that's in your heart, who am I? And yeah, some people from my old work were really aggressive. I got uh, over uh, 2,000 death threats from people who used to support me, of course. People People who voted for me, people said the most horrible things, we will rape your wife, shoot you, you know where your children go to school, stuff like that. And most of them, of course, are is nonsense because there are crazy people writing things on their computer. So it was a kind of a hectic time uh, and I had to tell my work, of course, and it was this Christian organization, so to say that the leader of the pack, he said, I can't believe it. And he said, well, I, I noticed this change when you talked about certain topics on radio, you were kind of a little more mild, not so 
so harsh anymore about you becoming a Muslim. And after I said, yeah, I became Muslim, he said, I couldn't sleep for it for two days. I couldn't accept it. It was so, so strange. But the, the hardest part for me was telling my grandfather because my grandfather was dying and he was 93, 94 years old and he was on his deathbed at home. I had to tell him and my mother told me, yeah, you have to tell your grandfather was his, her father. So I said, well, then you have to come with me. He's got like a shield. And then I just said, well, grandfather, I, uh, I became a Muslim. And then he closed his eyes. And I thought he stopped breathing because yeah, he was so old. And he really stopped breathing for a while. And then he stopped breathing again. And he looked at me and he said, well, at least you did become Catholic. <laughs> <laughs>
تحلم بابا واحدا انه يستولي على القلوب لا الجدران وهذا هو النصر يؤلمني لقاؤه يجب النظر للناس يا هند